Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Pioneer Baptist Church. I'm Pastor James. Grab your Bibles and get them ready to open to Genesis chapter 2. Genesis chapter 2. That's where we're going to begin today in our discussion about what God's will is for grandparents in the life of a family. In our Building Christian Home series, this particular topic has to do with how we relate to our grandparents, what their roles are, how we are to treat them. And what we want to do today is look at God's truth. As with the whole series, we want to hang truths on the walls of our homes. It's not always easy to live these truths out because sin is in the world. Praise be to God that we have forgiveness through his son, Jesus Christ, for the sins that we've committed and for the healing of the sins that have been done against us. If you'll turn to him today, in spite of whatever your situation is, you can find hope, you can find healing, you can find rest. One of the things that's difficult about God's truth is that it's true in spite of our sin. So even if you have a really unique, pitiful, painful situation, it doesn't change the fact that God's word is still true, that we should still declare that it's true, that we should still hang it on the mantle in our homes. And there's no day like today to start proclaiming God's truth. We are, brothers and sisters, his heralds. And so I want to encourage you, regardless of where your family is today, start reading the truths of God's word. Start building your family according to how he sees it. Start ruling your family as he sees it. And watch as God blesses your home and your family. We are so easily led astray. But good news, the grandparents in your life, are fountains of wisdom to help you find the path and to help you help you help your children to find the path as well. I look forward to talking to you today and I want to share with you some experiences that I've had and I want to encourage you from God's word about what God's will is for grandparents in the home. Let's pray and we'll jump right in. Father, we thank you for the gift of grandparents. Uh, we thank you for their love and their affection. We thank you, O oh God, for their wisdom. And we praise you, O oh Father, for their discipline and their obedience to you, because we are a result of their work, of their life being lived out. We pray that you would help us to not um, denigrate them, help us not to uh, disrespect them. God, help us to honor our parents. We ask God you just bless us as we look at what our responsibilities are as grandparents. Oh God, let us not consider the years wasted. Let us not consider time far too gone. But Lord, let us be anxious and willing to get to work to build our families for the glory of your kingdom. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. All right, everybody, some of my fondest memories growing up actually revolve around my grandparents. I can remember lying down in my uh, nanny's lap as I watched TV as a young man. She would scratch my back and um, she would just coo over us and tell us how wonderful we are. And that was just a really sweet time, a great memory that I have as a young man as a boy. Um, my grandfather uh, on my mother's side used to take me fishing and camping. And of course, my grandmother did too. But when I was out there, I was under his feet. I was under his shadow. I was wasting his fishing bait and I was messing up his fishing rods. And I was uh, being too loud in the deer stands and scaring off all the things we hunted. But it was my grandfather who taught me how to hunt how to fish. It was him who taught me how to build houses and how to uh, do things outside of my comfort zone simply because when we work hard, we can save money. He's the one who taught me to be frugal. He's the one who taught me uh, how to live. My grandmother taught me how to cook. What a wonderful gift she gave me of how to cook seafood and how to fry food. And um, she would always encourage me and build me up. And I just want to encourage you all that grandparents are just the sweetest and greatest gift to grandkids. I, I mean, I sometimes wonder why we think this way, but it wasn't until I got older um, that I realized why people think grandparents are so sweet and so awesome, um, generally speaking. Um, it's because they come in once a year or they come in twice a year and they are always on um, their best behavior. Um, your parents will tell you as you get older, Horror, horror stories of their grandparents that you've never seen an inch of that in their personalities or their character, but you know them as loving, gentle, kind, generous. Um, the parents know them as uh, tyrants, um, restrictive, unwise, selfish, um, all these kinds of things. We see that more and more in our society. So 
When we have grandparents, what we realize is that they have a very important role to play in our kids' lives. And we, as if you are a grandparent, you have a very important responsibility to be a part of your kids' lives and to be a part of your grandkids' lives. You share the burden of being able to carry on the faith from generation to generation. You share the burden of being able to build up uh, something that God has said is good this side of heaven, which is namely the family. And I want to encourage you today that wherever you're at in your journey, that you take these three simple applications today and apply them to your life. Um, that way your family can be stronger. That way your family can be more in love with Christ. And that way you can know you're not wasting your life. All right. So the first thing we want to look at in Genesis chapter 2 verse 24 is something we've looked at at the beginning of our family series. We, in that passage, we find out that God created man and woman. He created them in his image, and he gave them the gift of ruling over the earth. They were supposed to be fruitful, multiply, and fill it. Once God created woman, Adam called her woman, and God declared that for this reason, a man shall leave his father and his mother and shall be joined to his wife, and they shall become one flesh. That's Genesis 2, 24. Later on, Jesus will quote this same passage when speaking about divorce in Matthew 19, 5 through 6. And what I want to encourage you and remind you of today is that God's purpose for us is to multiply and fill the earth. Your purpose is not bound up in the life of your kid. Your purpose is bound up in your fellowship with God, your obedience to God, your enjoyment of God with the things that he has called you to enjoy. God gave you marriage. God gave you your spouse. God gave you your child. And you are supposed to experience your child and your spouse as you experience the rest of the world with the Lord. He is to guide you in every step. He is to encourage you. He's to rebuke you. He's going to follow you. You need to invite him into every step of your life. And so we learned that very early on, God gave us this great responsibility to build families. And in this passage in 2.24, we see very clearly that the man and woman, when they're married, are supposed to leave their mothers and fathers and become one flesh. And what does this mean for grandparents? Does this mean that they have no place in the lives of people that they created, that they raised, that they invested in? Absolutely not. The fact that man and woman leave their homes and become one flesh means that they get to participate in the same thing that their parents participated in, the same thing Adam and Eve got to participate in, the good plan of God for their life. What marriage is to the grandparents is seeing their kids enter into a new phase of obedience to God, picking up the responsibilities that God has given them in time so that they can propagate your family, they can propagate God's glory, continuing on through multiple generations forward. So what we see here is that God has commanded us to leave our fathers and mothers and to be bound in marriage. That does not mean that the grandparents have no role in the life. It means that it's a different phase of life. And one of the things that's difficult about this is to realize that this person that you have raised to be dependent upon you all of a sudden needs to be independent from you. And they need to achieve what God has said they were created to achieve. And they can't do that with you constantly holding them back. You're, there are different phases to everything in life. And grandparents, your children are not children anymore. Once they're married, they are adults. And you need to embrace this new phase of life. Celebrate it because it's a part of God's plan. You need to teach them that it's good. And you need to give them the space to grow and to develop. That's at marriage. So mother-in-laws, you shouldn't be overbearing. Father-in-laws, you shouldn't be stingy with your daughter as she's becoming a, a woman who's devoted to another man. You should be embracing this journey. And can I be honest with you? The Bible is not silent about how you get to that day of marriage. He tells us that you future grandparents or you current grandparents had a responsibility every single day, every day of your children's life. And very well, it is possible that you could have squandered all of that opportunity. But today, I want to encourage you, you need to get started back 
striving for and aiming for God's purpose for their lives? Do you have family that's aimless right now, whose marriages are struggling or who have already broken up? Grandkids who are confused and lost in this world, then you have a responsibility every day to teach them about the glories of God, about his faithfulness and his testimonies, and building them up into the image that he has created them to be. This is your job. And when your kids grow up and get married, it is a new phase of life, and you need to let them go. You need to celebrate them going out the door. You need to celebrate the struggles of finding faith in God through his provision. When you're not there to meet every need and heal every brokenness, you, brothers and sisters, need to teach them to grow up, make families, and multiply and fill the earth. This is what God said is good. Now, I know that's sad for some of you because some of you are widows. Some of you are uh, abandoned um, by spouses. And as you grow, grow, grow older, you've spent so much time loving and developing your child that you don't want to let them go. And I can empathize with you, even though I don't totally understand it myself. I know that it is difficult to let things go, but it becomes exceedingly difficult when we make those things the source of our happiness. You see, brothers and sisters, we've been taught that God is the source of all good things. He's the one who gave us our kids. He's the one who gave us the moments we've experienced with our kids. He's the one who brought us through the valleys together. It was him all along who was giving us these good things. And when we worship him and we don't make idols of our children, it is much, much easier to see them move on knowing that the God who gave us the joy of our children is continuing to be in our life to give us the joys of grandchildren, the joys of watching them grow up, and different kinds of joys that this world is full of if we want to walk with him and experience them with him. So be encouraged, grandparents, but give your kids space, send them off. For this reason, a man and a woman shall be bound together and they shall leave their father and their mother and become one flesh. They need to start a family. This is still true today as it was back then. And it is still one of the sweetest things that can happen this side of heaven. So number one, remember, grandparents, it is your job to let your children go and to make their own families. Don't micromanage them. Don't hold them back. Don't manipulate them. Don't become um, idol makers and make them idols and make them guilty all the time. Celebrate with them, give them wise counsel, support them, but give them the place they need to spread their wings and do what God created them to do. Number two, not only are you supposed to let your kids get married and grow up, and um, and this is important for you grandparents, um, especially to understand because you're going to have to teach your grandkids that this is the role that they need to play. All throughout scripture, the Bible tells us that um the parents and the grandparents have a role to play in keeping um, people able to see the world in the right light, to be able to see it according to how God sees it. You know, people don't learn how to view the world by accident. They watch others. They listen to others. And what happens is if you don't guide them, someone else will. And it's obvious in our culture today with the destruction of the family and as it's crumbling around us that people are listening to the wrong folks. They are emphasizing the wrong things. Let's listen to what the Bible says we're supposed to be teaching our children. If you look into Titus, uh, it's a small book in the New Testament, chapter 2, verses 4 through 8, you'll see that um, the women in the church are commanded to do something very specific. They are, can, uh, sorry, excuse me. They are commanded in chapter 2, verses 4 through 8, to do this. Older women, likewise, are to be reverent in their behavior, not malicious gossips, nor enslaved to much wine, teaching what is good, so that they may encourage the younger women to live their to love their husbands, to love their children, to be sensible, pure, workers at home, kind, being subject to their own husbands, so that the word of God will not be dishonored. Do you want to know, grandparents, that God entrusted you, even in the New Testament, with the job of teaching them how they should live, how they should look at God, how they should respond to their own families? Do you know how many people think that children are an inconvenience today? Where did they learn that? 
Why, why didn't our parents teach us that having children is what life is about? Why are you hesitant to tell your children and your grandchildren that this is what life is about? Maybe it's because you didn't do it that way, or maybe it was because you were taught that it was um, an inconvenience or that it was an impediment to a career or that, you know, you'll never make ends meet unless you have multiple incomes. Whatever you learned, whatever you thought you learned, brothers and sisters, you need to reverse that today and teach your kids and your grandkids to build families, that this is what we need to give our lives to, that we are created to do this. And that if God gives us the blessing of being able to have children and grandchildren, then we have the responsibility to teach them that this is a worthy place. And in fact, the best place to invest our lives with the Lord and his help. Now, Timothy, I'm sorry, Titus 2, 4 through 8, tells older women to teach younger women. Now that's both mothers and grandmothers teaching younger women how they're supposed to love their husbands. Did you guys know that doesn't come naturally? That everybody's selfish naturally and that it's not natural to love your husbands. And even if you do say, hey, love your husband, in today's culture, that's kind of arbitrary. They don't think that that has a definite um, form. But brothers and sisters, you are to teach your younger daughters to love their family, which means to selflessly serve them, to build them up into the image of God, to discipline them, to encourage them. And this is what they're supposed to devote themselves to. That's, sec that's Timothy, I'm sorry, Titus 2, 4 through 8. Second Timothy, which is just a few pages to your left, talks about how a grandmother was super influential in Timothy's life. In 2 Timothy 1, uh, verse 5, it says this. Also, oh, I'm sorry, chapter 1, verse 5, says this. For I am mindful of the sincere faith within you, which first dwelt in your grandmother Lois and in your mother Eunice, and I am sure that it is also in you as well. Paul, talking to Timothy, who's in busy building a church, um, reminds him that his faith was given to him by his grandmother. You know, Timothy may not have seen his grandmother a whole lot, but his grandmother built up his mother, Eunice, in such a way that she was willing to pass her faith on to Timothy. I want you to notice that Timothy didn't hear the gospel necessarily from the apostle Paul. He may have, but what he did do is learn who God was and how to fear him from his mother and from his grandmother. And I want to encourage you today, you are the most influential people in your grandchild's life. There's no one more influential in this world, not pastors, not teachers, not coaches, than a parent or a grandparent. And it is your responsibility to teach these children how to view the world the way that they're supposed to. So number one, you're supposed to let your kids go, celebrate them going into marriage and creating their own families, letting them be independent. You're not going to be an overbearing mother-in-law, an overbearing father-in-law. You're not going to be uh, oppressive. You're going to be helpful. Number two, you're going to recognize that it's your responsibility to teach as a grandparent your younger grandkids. Now, let me ask you a question. How are you going to teach your grandkids if you're not around? It is going to be imperative that you start being around your grandchildren. We oftentimes spend our lives um, going all around the country, uh, visiting beautiful things, experiencing different trips with friends. And what we do is we drop in on our grandkids once a year or once every a couple of times a year, or we expect our kids to come visit us, but we live in different cities and we don't experience life together. Do you know that it's your responsibility to teach uh, your grandkids how to fear God? You're supposed to give his testimonies to him. And so how can you do that if you're not around? It is imperative that you invest in your family so that they'll know what's important in this world. If you love them from a distance, then they'll love their families from a distance in the future. If you love them from a distance today, then you, they will love God from a distance when they grow up. And you don't want to be the source of that. Trust me, not only do you want to build your grandchildren up into the image of what God wants them to be, but you want to be able to testify to God that you are obedient to what he entrusted to you. Final verse in this little section is Deuteronomy 4.9. And this takes us back to a passage that reminds parents that their responsibility is to constantly teach 
constantly teach their children, whenever they stand up, whenever they go to sleep, wherever they go. But in Deuteronomy 4, 9, we have an, uh, a, a little kind of caveat I want to pull your attention to. It says, only give heed to yourself and keep your soul diligently so that you do not forget the things which your eyes have seen and they do not depart from your heart all the days of your life. But make them known to your sons and your grandsons. He says to the people of Israel, don't forget what God has done to you. And your responsibility is to make sure that your sons and your grandsons know what God has done for you. Brothers and sisters, it is a great responsibility for you to teach your children and to teach your grandchildren. It's not for you to be overbearing in their life. Your goal should be to see your kids and your grandkids attain more independence, a relationship with God, and to accomplish what they were created for, to walk with God and to create families. You need to invest yourself. You need to believe that this is true and that you need to start investing yourself into it today. Finally, our third point today. Anybody who gets older, uh, becomes a grandparent, inevitably sees that their grandparents and their parents die. And during those years, the question is, is how are they cared for? The question is, is how are you going to be cared for? So if the grandparents are supposed to raise their kids, invest in them so that they can go forth and make new families, if the grandparents are responsible for passing down the testimonies of God's goodness and teaching people what's true in this life, then how are the families, how are the parents and the grandkids supposed to treat the grandparents? Well, brothers and sisters, there's a lot of words um, about this, but I want to call your attention to one particular um, verse. In 1 Timothy 5, 8, the Bible says, if you do not provide for those of your own household, you are worse than an unbeliever. Now, when Timothy is writing this, what he says is that these widows who were being neglected, these widows who had children and they weren't taking care of them. These children not taking care of their widows, he says, are worse than unbelievers. And so as Christians, our goals should not be to abuse our parents or find distance between our parents and our grandparents. Well, we shouldn't try to avoid our grandparents. We should try to provide for them. We need to return that blessing which they had given us. I say this with the most gentleness and kindness that I can possibly muster. Our families are very broken and the ways are very gray going forward. But you should not have to put your parents in homes to be cared for. The reason we do that is because we don't want to be inconvenienced. We don't want our jobs to be forsaken. We don't want our trips to be canceled. We don't want to endure sleepless nights. We don't want to do the very things that they did for 20 years for us. Now, I'm not saying it's easy. I'm not even saying that it's possible in your situation, but I'm telling you, the Bible says that if you don't take care of your parents, you are worse than an unbeliever. The Bible does not call us when we get married and we're supposed to leave and make our own family to forget about our parents and our grandparents. It's our responsibility to care for them, to love them, to respect them. You say, Brother James, we're, you're not quoting any verses for that. Well, here's what I'm telling you. The Bible tells us that we're supposed to honor those who are honorable. We're supposed to obey our parents and fear them. And so as we honor them, that never stops. As long as they're our parents, we're supposed to honor them. We're supposed to treat old men with reverence. We're supposed to speak to older women as mothers. The Bible tells us in Timothy, the Bible tells us exactly how we're supposed to treat the elderly in our churches. And the truth is, brothers and sisters, if you have a mom or a dad who's alive, it is your responsibility to care for them when they become weak. Now, you shouldn't be taking this responsibility from them early, but the children need to understand that this is a phase of life. 
Just like your parents had to understand that you leaving them and creating a new family is a phase of life, so is them getting older and losing their independence and needing someone to help take care of them. That is a phase of life. One that should be celebrated and one that should be elevated in our society, not diminished as some sort of difficulty to be endured, some horrible part of life. If you will look for the beauty in it, if you'll look for God's grace in it, then you will see that there is good as you walk with him in obedience in what he has entrusted to you, no matter what phase of life it is. Now, just a few closing remarks. We learned in Proverbs a few weeks ago that uh, in chapter 13, 22, that a wise man leaves an inheritance to his children's children. And so as we look forward as grandparents to teaching our kids about the importance of God and what he's done, and as we look forward to um, uh, living our life for God's glory, building our families, and what we need to remember is that our goal should not be just to make our retirement life full of adventure while our kids sit back at home. No, brothers and sisters, that could be a part of what we do, but the truth is we ought to also invest in the future generations. We want to leave the world better than we found it. We want them to have a better advantage than what we had. The Bible says a wise man leaves an inheritance to his children's children. This is both fiscal, but it's also spiritual. I want you to notice that um, the gospel needs to be handed down every generation from parents and grandparents to children. They need to learn of God's faithfulness. They need to learn to fear him. They need to know that the way the culture tells us to live and all of its selfishness and all of its vanity is worthless and fruitless. It's not a way to spend your life. Brothers and sisters, we are called to be counter-cultural. Counter-cultural. Finally, Psalm 71 um, says this. Psalm chapter 71 in verses 17 through 18. It says, O oh God, you have taught me from my youth, and I still declare your wondrous deeds. And even when I'm old and gray, O oh God, do not forsake me until I declare your strength to this generation, your power to all who are to come. You want to know what your job is, grandparents? Declare God's glory and his wonder to those who are to come. This is what you should be consumed with. When you're young, you have to work, right? You, you, your hand is to the plow and it's difficult because you have to deal with thorns and thistles. When you get older, you can't work anymore. And so you have one job to do. Declare God's glory to the next generation. Teach them about his faithfulness to you and to your families. Share stories of the Bible with them. This is what you should do. The psalmist declared that don't take me in my old age until I declare your glory to the next generation. I pray that that's your goal as grandparents today, that you'd be encouraged that becoming a grandparent is a wonderful part of life, but your job with your family is not done then. But when you get too old to be able to uh, fend for yourself in the same way, you still have work to do. You're still valuable. And your parent, your kids are to look at you not as a inconvenience, but as a blessing, as a phase of life. They're going to be celebrating the eternal life that's in God, the fact that he redeems our broken flesh that gets old and dies. We're going to celebrate the fact that our hope is not bound up in our bodies or in our riches. Our hope is bound up in the King of kings and Lord of lords who gave his son to die for us and who has rescued us from in countless encounters with evil, who has blessed us abundantly every single day, who is worthy to be feared and honored in every day of our life. Brothers and sisters, this does not happen by accident. It is according to God's plan and his structure. And if we do not willingly in obedience follow it, then we will be contributing to the destruction of our homes and our society and everything that God has made that is beautiful. Let us jump on board what God says is true. Let us honor our families and wrap our lives around them. And as we do that, I pray that God would bless your homes with peace and joy and fulfillment in the days to come. May God bless you. Until next time.